Hello everyone, I'm Bhavaneshwara Kashi from ICTSTIFR Bangalore, India. And I'm here to explain higher order modes in gravitational waves insights from LISA and numerical relative visualizations. Uh, this is the outline of the talk. Uh, firstly, let's understand what are gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are ripples in space-time and they're caused due to the acceleration of uh, compact objects like neutron stars or uh, black hole uh, during the events like mergers or collisions. Uh, in the picture, you can see that uh, two uh, compact objects are uh, uh, in a merger and they create gravitational waves and, they propagate, and the gravitational waves are propagating outwards. By the time they reach Earth, the uh, gravitational waves, these, the, these waves, they become very faint and it's very uh, difficult for us to detect. So there are dedicated uh, observatories like LIGO, Virgo, Kagra, etc., to detect these kind of waves. And uh, there are future missions uh, which are dedicated, and they are, uh, for example, Lisa is uh, there to uh, is a space based observatory uh, which has three spacecrafts in this triangular formulation as seen in this picture. And uh, uh, it's a very uh, efficient way to detect uh, low frequency uh, ranges of these gravitational waves. Uh, we will uh, see it in detail uh, in this presentation. Now, uh, let's understand what are modes in gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are mathematically described as the perturbations in the metric tensor. Uh, so, uh, spin-weighted spherical harmonics with, uh, are like with the spin weight, which is uh, like the in, uh, which accounts for the intrinsic angular momentum. These these harmonics they help in the part the composition of these perturbations and um, the uh, strain gravitational wave uh, data which is uh, absorbed by absorbed by the detector. It is decomposed into different modes and this is done mathematically using multipolar expansion uh, and uh, it is modeled as uh, h of t which is dependent of the coefficients hlm of t and uh, yslm that is uh, spin weighted spherical harmonics the uh, dominant mode of the gravitational waves are quadrupole mode where l is equal to 2 and m is equal to plus or minus 2 so quadrupole mode is the primary mode uh, and it has the highest amplitude, so it's easily de detectable by many of the detectors. The waveform is modeled as uh, H22, which depends on the amplitude and uh, phase of the modes. Coming to the higher order modes, higher order modes have L greater than 2 and other M's. So uh, these uh, higher order modes have very crucial information about uh, the source and uh, uh, other different parameters of the event. So, uh, uh, but we can see here in the graph that the uh, 3, 2 and 4, 2, that is higher order modes uh, have very weak or the strain is very faint when compared to H22 mode. The uh, mathematical formulation is HLM of T, which is dependent again on the amplitude and uh, phi of the mode. Higher order modes are very much significant in uh, asymmetric uh, sources. This is one of the important things to note. Now let's look at spin-weighted spherical harmonics. Spin-weighted spherical harmonics are YSLM. Uh, these are the solutions to the spin-weighted Laplace equations. Uh, uh, in simple way, we can understand it as our general uh, spherical harmonics when combined with the spin-weight factor. Uh, in this uh, representation, we can see that uh, C for different L's, that is L equal to 2, this is L equal to 3, and L equal to 4. And uh, m is equal to 2 for all, and s is equal to minus 2. Uh, s is equal to minus 2 is uh, for gravitational waves. nr. nr is numerical relativity, and it is very much useful uh, to understand gravitational waves, as these simulations are the solutions for Einstein field equation. And uh, they are discretized uh, space 
into a computational grid and methods like finite differencing or spectral techniques like spectral analysis, uh, they are used to approximate the metric behavior. Here, uh, we use uh, CIFOR to uh, uh, so, uh, extra extrapolated CIFO data in order to, uh, to uh, get the data for visualization. Uh, so what is CIFO here? CIFO is one of the well scalar. It describes the curvature of the space time. So the extra extrapolated CIFO data with the corrected center of mass drift, these provide uh, gravitational wave polarization data and uh, to understand the, this data is used for visualization and uh, uh, other analysis. Uh, and uh, so it indirectly provides us uh, with a lot of information about the source dynamics, orientation, and distance. Uh, so uh, for visualizations here, we use Python and Paraview. Paraview and Python, these are chosen because they can handle uh, extremely uh, high uh, amount of data and uh, uh, and also the automation with Python, the Paraview can work with a lot of uh, uh, more uh, a, lo a lot lesser computational time and uh, it makes it ideal for the scientific visualization. Uh, so this is a dominant mode that is uh, two comma two, and uh, uh, to the uh, right you can see that uh, the representation is on a unit sphere, and to the left uh, you can see that the two two mode it changes radially. Higher order mode visualization. Here we focus on octopolar radiation. Octopolar radiation is the immediate term after quadrupolar uh, radiation. That is the third order term in the multipolar expansion. And uh, this radiation is significant in strong tidal interaction, uh, rapid rotation, or complex merger dynamics uh, sources or events. But it is very challenging to detect these uh, because of the weaker amplitudes. Uh, as we have seen it before in the graphs, uh, so the, as uh, as the quarter pole mode is very much dominant when compared to these modes. So, uh, yeah, so this is the visualization of uh, octopolar mode on unit sphere and the left one, it changes radially. So, uh, so now uh, let's go to the detectors. That is LIGO. LIGO is a ground-based detectors and the gravitational waves are uh, measured when there is a change in the uh, length of the arms when there is a gravitational wave passing. So uh, unlike LIGO, LISA is a space-based detector. There are three spacecrafts as we have seen in the diagram before. Uh, but uh, so the space uh, crafts are, um, apart, like 2.5 kilometers apart, and it's a triangular formulation. And this is chosen for enhancing the sensitivity and directional uh, detection. So uh, one of the main thing to note in LISA is LISA employs free floating test masses and uh, the thrusters uh, to minimize the non-gravitational wave forces. And also there is high precision optical system, and very advanced data analysis uh, combined with uh, very, very advanced communication for the precise measurement of gravitational waves. This is the LISA sensitivity curve. LISA sensitivity curve uh, is developed uh, using the transfer uh, function of LISA and also the um, different, uh, different noises LISA can uh, can be affected by, for example, uh, apart from inst uh, instrumental noise, LISA can also uh, 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 have the galactic confusion noise, uh, which is not observed in uh, ground-based detectors. Uh, let's see how efficient uh, LISA uh, and is uh, an A LIGO can detect higher order modes. So 
uh, higher order moles here we consider two uh, first uh, we are going to show how two comma two uh, we are going to consider two comma two the dominant mode and also three comma two modes and uh, we compare them with the sensitivity curves of LIGO and LISA. So uh, here we can see that the uh, mass is like, uh, so there is a mass ratio of 10, right, for the IM village. And uh, we can see that LIGO can detect these signals, a LIGO. Uh, and also LISA can detect and it falls in both regions. But when the mass ratio increases, we can see that the um, the uh, gravitational wave signal uh, moves towards lesser frequency and a LIGO can't detect it and it totally falls into LISA's sensitivity range. Let's talk about MREs. MREs are very fascinating binary systems where uh, there is a large uh, black hole and, uh, all, and, uh, and the other member is a very small compact object. Uh, small in the sense here, the mass is very less. So often MREs have the mass ratios around uh, 10 power five and or greater. Uh, we generally find MREs in between the galactic centers. Lisa is one of the main targets to uh, is to uh, detect MREs, and uh, as MREs emit very low frequencies, so uh, so in the uh, analysis we have uh, considered the mass uh, mass one range uh, as ten power five to ten power seven, whereas the uh, mass two as uh, fixed ten. So here we have uh, mass ratios. Um, uh, as we can see that as the mass ratio increases, uh, the frequency decreases and uh, the uh, LISA sensitivity is able to detect these MREs and a like current. LISA's detection for various mass ranges here we're going to explore uh, various modes uh, and for mass ranges uh, for 10 power 5 to 10 power uh, 7 so these uh, uh, so let's let's get into the here in this graph we can see that the uh, lisa's and a lego sensitivity is compared with gravitational wave uh, signal of 2 2 comma 2 mode for the mass ranges uh, 10 power 5 to 10 power 8 uh, for SMBH. So uh, let's uh, analyze the graph. So for uh, as the mass ratio increases, the uh, frequency decreases and it more comes into uh, LISA. And here we can see that a LIGO is very far from detecting these kind of SMBH uh, signals. It goes the same with 3-2 mode. When coming to 3-3 uh, mode, the uh, strain is uh, way less, uh, but it still falls in Lisa's sensitivity curve range. But when it comes to 4-4 mode, the mass range, uh, with the same mass range, SMBH, we can see that the uh, strain uh, decreases more and uh, only higher mass ratios can be detected by the LISA and rest can't be detected by both LISA and ELIGO. Uh, here we're considering IMBH uh, for mass range 100 to 10 bar 4. Uh, yeah, so uh, we can see that for IMBH, uh, also the um, uh, the strain is uh, very less, and with the uh, low frequencies, A LIGO can't detect any of the three three mode. But uh, a few high mass ratios, uh, uh, Lisa can uh, detect uh, these uh, IMBH. Uh, binary merges. 
So in conclusion, higher order modes, uh, they provide great detail about the astrophysical dynamics happening uh, like uh, black hole mergers, neuron collision, supernovae, etc. So, uh, but these asymmetries, um, they have they have a lot of information about the source, about the event and orientation, and many more parameters. Uh, NR simulations and visualizations help us in understanding these events in a more and a more greater greater detail and. Um, uh, so, uh, from apart from that, the detectors such as LISA, uh, the new upcoming detectors, they are trying to uh, detect these lower order modes. Uh, so that, um, uh, the, sorry, these higher order modes, um, uh, they it's used. Uh, so as the LISA detection range is from 0.1 millihertz to one hertz, it opens a new frontier for uh, detection of these astrophysical events. It enables uh, us to study various um, uh, events like uh, SMBH mergers, MREs, and stochastic uh, gravitational wave backgrounds. And these are inaccessible to ground-based detectors like LIGO, Virgo, and Kagra. And this journey doesn't stop here. We hope we uh, have more uh, detectors which can detect way more less sensitivity, uh, less uh, frequencies, and uh, lesser strains. Uh, so uh, this is my presentation. These are few references. And thank you for listening. And if you have any doubts, please contact via uh, the given email. Thank you.